so it's the end of a really long day and my Arteza box of gouache came in the mail. Yes, can't wait to uh, test them out. So what I've done is I've selected five tubes, um, kind of random colors. One or two of them I picked for a reason, which I'll explain in the video. And I've paired it with the gouache that I'm currently using. I actually have, I think, one, two, three, four different brands that I'm gonna compare the Arteza to because my gouache set has um, other other brands in it for various reasons. I happen to use uh, sh Schminky, Schminka uh, paints when I do botanicals now. I took an amazing class with a botanical artist and he taught us how to mix our colors to where they look more um, natural and this brand of paint actually has a higher uh, pigment count in it. So I'm gonna do a quick little swatch test. So I'm gonna start by dividing up the paper into sections so that I know which paints I already have painted with. <laughs> Because at the end of the day, you're going to want to go back to this and reference it. Now, what some artists use this for is they, um, they might do like a color swatch test and then start painting after they've done that because it allows them to see the pigments on the paper after it's dried. And with gouache, gouache dries a different color um, than, than what it looks on the paper. So it's really important to keep that in mind. Um, swatch tests can be really, really great tool. And I'm just gonna adjust the camera a teensy bit so that you can see a little bit more of the paper because we're gonna do about five tubes. All right, so let's start with one of my favorite colors and I'm gonna start with Arteza here. So I'm gonna mark A for Arteza. And I'm just gonna do the Arteza paints real quick. So this is the Naples yellow. And already I'm noticing that the pigment is not as rich as the, the Windsor and Newton that I use frequently. And I happen to um, prefer Windsor and Newton. I think they're their colors are really rich, but you know, like I said before, you really just don't know until um, until it dries. So we're gonna find out. So that was Naples Yellow. So now I'm gonna do Windsor and Newton. So that's gonna be the W. And yeah, see how like orange and rich that color is? It's just got like such an earthy tone to it that's unmistakable. I really love this color. You'll notice I'm not really concerned with like how much water that I'm using because I'm just gonna evenly put the pigment on the paper for the purpose of this test. So already I'm seeing a variation in color here. One is a lot more saturated and looks a lot more orange. Again, nothing wrong with that. I'm just noticing it's different. So I don't think I have another color for, I don't think I have another brand for Naples. I actually just use that as Windsor & Newton. So let's move on to the next one. Let's do Rose, because Rose is really exciting. Again, I'm gonna start with the Arteza or Arteza, I'm not sure how you how you pronounce it. And we're gonna do the, the rose color. And I'm also kind of carefully mixing the pigment into the water. That's another thing I wanted to mention. I know I said I don't care how much water I'm using, but no matter how much water you're using, make sure that you actually mix the water and the pigment together. So now we're gonna do the Naples. No, we're doing the rose, sorry. <laughs> we're gonna do the rose. Wow, that's, that's really like magenta looking. Well, that's really pretty. And since I don't have a straight rose, I'm gonna use an opera pink. 
um, just off the bat, it kind of looked like it might have been a match for this, but that's not really how you're supposed to do this. So just ignore me, please. <laughs> I'm just trying to find some matches in these brands. Wow. And look at how vibrant that is. Like, look how bright that color is. So again, the Windsor and Newtons are real vibrant, really rich in color. If you're looking to achieve that kind of like a magenta color. Now I do have in the Schminky, I do have the rose color. So we're gonna use the Schminky rose. And we're gonna see just how different that one is. And already straight out of the tube, I can tell. Um, so I'm gonna put an S for that. Wow, that's really, like that, that looks red. That does not look magenta or pink. Wow. Well, there you go, folks. Look at that. Now that is really a rich earth tone. That is a really natural tone. And that's one primary reason why I use Schminky for painting flowers because it's a lot more natural. Even though my artwork doesn't go for realism all the time, um, I still think that that's really important to use natural colors when you're painting. Okay, so let's move on to uh, sap green because I think that's the one that I have the most and I'm just gonna use this and I'm gonna wipe up some of the pigment on here because it's still wet and I'm just gonna reuse this section of the palette. So we're gonna start with the Arteza. So let's see what they're, wow, that's interesting. I've never seen a sap green that color. That's really interesting. It's very desaturated. Not sure I like this as a as a green for sap green. <clears throat> so then I'm gonna use the uh, Windsor and Newton sap green. And for this one, I don't have the Schminky, but I do have another brand that I'm gonna introduce in a minute because I I discovered this other brand too. And I think they're really interesting the way that they market their um, their paints. All right, so on to Windsor and Newton. Classic. That's real dark. Wow, look at how dark that is. Wow. And that's that's real rich. Like these these all look really. Sorry, this is. Just bugging me a little bit. <laughs> I like things to look perfect. Ah, <laughs> all of us artists, right? <laughs> we have this bane. <laughs> okay, so I don't have the schminky tube of green, but I do have the QOR, and I'm just gonna hold this up so you can see this brand because you've probably seen it in the art store or somewhere else. They're they are doing really heavy marketing right now. And I really like the way that they are marketing their brand. I just don't know if I like their paints. I'm really just undecided because it just doesn't feel like a, a gouache paint. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. This is actually a watercolor. So let's actually just for fun, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and show what the watercolor looks like if it's a traditional sap green, even though it's not opaque, let's just see what it's supposed to look like. Wow. That's got a really like desaturated color. It looks almost like it has a just a tiny bit of red or blue in it. It's definitely more of a blue tone, I think, but it, I also see a little bit of red in that. I don't know, I just, I don't know what to make of their paints. All right, so moving on, let's get to the next one because this has been very fun and I'm gonna bring another palette out. 
And we're gonna do the um, yellow ochre and then the Payne's gray, and that'll be it for today. Um, I just wanna see what their yellow ochre looks like. And then Payne's gray is a really unique color. It's um, slightly blue, but with some brands, it's not as blue. And in particular, the Schminkies are known for their Payne's gray. So we're gonna try that out and we're gonna see how that color does after this one. So this is a yellow ochre. Wow, that's starting off really saturated. I, I really like this. I like the Arteza's yellow ochre. That's a really beautiful color. It's really nice. I like that a lot. You know what? I don't know if I pulled out. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I just have the Windsor and Newton. All right, so you only get to see two tubes for this one today. And these two actually look really close. Wow, Arteza gets a win on this one. Look at that, wow. I think that's a match. That's real close. Got a little bit more brown maybe in this one, more pigment. But that that's really interesting. Um, that could be used for like a light wash. Really, really interesting wash. Okay, so then uh, last one. They did not have a Payne's Gray and the closest I could get was this Stone Blue and it's a blue gray. So Payne's Gray has a bluish tone to it um, and it's kind of known for that, but it's dark and it's rich. And people love using it as an alternative to black. So right off, I'm seeing this does definitely not, it does not match the label on the tube. Do you see this? Look at that. This is way darker. This almost looks like a sky blue that's desaturated. And I don't have a Windsor & Newton of Payne's Gray because I don't use it frequently in my artwork, but I did purposely buy this Daniel Smith. And I apologize because <laughs> I don't have a full set of paints in every brand, but I do that for a reason. I really like uh, certain brands. Their pigments are um, just more in my color palette. And so sometimes I will use a different gouache brand when I'm painting. And I know you have to be really careful with that. Some brands you can't do that. Like for instance, there is a brand that has, I think it's derived from honey and it will uh, separate. So you have to be really careful with that. So you wanna do some research before you do that, before you combine your tubes. Look at that. Wow, that's really... So then here's the Daniel Smith. Look at that. Wow, it's a beautiful color. It almost has like a rich blue um, feel to it. It's definitely not a warm color. But that's a great color for um, shadows and for doing particular studies when you don't want to use a black because it definitely looks like a black, but um, you can kind of avoid the starkness of using a solid black color. Well, that's a wrap. Again, I apologize for not having every tube of every brand, but I did think that, you know, like this was a great comparison here and also here. And I think you should uh, go grab a few tubes and do a test yourself because um, I went to the art store the other day to buy these Arteza paints and I know they sell them only online, but I thought I would give it a chance and see if, you know, maybe our local store carried it now because, you know, they've been, they've been online for a while now. But um, at the art store, they were like, no, we don't have that. It's not professional paints. <laughs> we only carry professional paints. And I immediately thought in my mind, like, based on whose preference, it's really, um, <laughs> I mean, how, how are you establishing that this is professional or not? <laughs> Clearly the Windsor's and, Windsor and Newtons are very consistent in the opacity of the pigment that's being laid down. But I don't like the fact that 
you know, these tubes are really expensive. So I definitely, um, I definitely think if you are doing botanical art or if you're exploring your palette, try different brands. I mean, you never know, you might absolutely love like one of these brands. You might just, just love one of these because the Schminkies, I really love the Schminkies. But yeah, give it a try. Let me know what you think. Um, give it a holler. And uh, yeah, give it a shout out. If you have used the QOR watercolors, please do let me know down below what you think of it. Cause like I said before, I'm just super undecided about that tube. I don't, I don't know what to think. So yeah, I think it'd be awesome to hear from you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you later.